Hi peeps, welcome. So today we're going to be doing the third video of the What I Buy It series where I go through trend mood and see what makeup products would I buy and what I wouldn't buy. Basically, a majority of the YouTubers do this, so let's just get into it. Okay, again, I'm going to be moving to the side so you can see the picture over here. Oh, there has been so many releases since I talked about my last one of these videos. I don't know if that's a good thing because it gives me a lot to talk about or a bad thing that these brands are still coming out with so many releases with this whole coronavirus going on. It's like they're just teasing us to want us to buy more things. Like, no, sweetie, I got other things I need to worry about. That's not makeup. Kylie is coming out with a face sunscreen. I don't really trust makeup brands who do skincare. I know uh, Rihanna is coming out on the new skincare line. We'll talk about her in a minute. But this one, it's like... You can't, they say it's coral reef safe, but based on the description, it's, uh, what is it called? It's, uh, what is, they say it's reef safe, but based on the description, it's a more of a chemical sunscreen, and you can't be both. The only sunscreens I buy now are from, like, our Korean sunscreens, because I feel like their, like, sunscreen technology is so advanced. Okay, Laneige is coming out with a whole, like, cream skin line, where they have a, mist, a cleanser, and a moisturizer. Laneige is one of those brands that are kind of Korean-esque. I don't know if they're actually full on Korean skincare line, but are they actual Korean skincare line or they're just like inspired by Korean skincare? I talked about in the haul video where I just don't buy a lot of high-end skincare products. Sephora is coming out with a pumpkin infused makeup sponge, makeup brush, and a few lip products. It's summer. I mean, it's closer to fall now, but when this was posted, it was in July 4th. Okay, so it's Halloween and summer now, I guess that's how it's going. It's, it's like the coronavirus messing up all of these launches where brands just don't know seasons anymore. Elf is coming out with a stay all night micro fine setting mist and the when I first saw this I was like oh that's so cool you know setting mist we love setting mists then I saw how much it costed it's like ten dollars like Elf is really jacking up their prices lately it's like I'm not saying that maybe it's like worth it for the ingredients or like the formulation of this but it, they only come with like 2.7 fluid ounces and that's not a lot I have a NYX Bear With Me setting spray and that's around $10 also and I get a lot more product than that one so if I was going to repurchase a setting spray or a setting mist it wouldn't be this one Ofra is coming out with a, a summer collection it just consists of eyeshadow palettes, lip glosses, I think that's what it is and a face palette the big eyeshadow palette kind of looks like the ColourPop, what is that, like the big ColourPop eyeshadow palette. And the other two eyeshadow palettes, I don't really see myself using. I'm not a big fan on face palettes and I don't like lip gloss, so that's a no-brainer. Hourglass is coming out with a new mascara. It's called the Instant Extensions Mascara. It's supposed to be like a two-way mascara, kind of like... What was the other Thrive Cosmetics mascara? So like that kind of tubing technology for mascara, I'm very interested in. But with the price point of all Hourglass products, it's kind of a no-brainer that wouldn't probably get it. But like Hourglass is one of those high-end brands I'm very intrigued with, and a lot of their products I can see myself buying if I was like <laughs> rich. <laughs> but Hourglass is one of those brands I really enjoy just looking and admiring from afar. <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a lip and cheek glow cream, it's like a cream blush and a lip tint. They look like they're very small and the sh there's two shades but the swatches for them kind of look exactly the same. Like cream blush is not one of those products that I'll probably splurge on because they're perfectly fine cream blushes from the drugstore. I mean, if you want to splurge on a cream blush and 
you like the packaging or the color selection of this, I say go for it, you know, treat yourself. <laughs> Another mascara release is from Pat McGrath and they have the mascara, it's called Dark Star Mascara. Again, Pat McGrath is one of those brands that I kind of like to admire from afar because everything they make and release is so beautiful, but the wand for this mascara is not my thing. I like more plastic ones. I recently watched Angelica Ola's video where she talked about like if anyone likes plastic wands, they're weird. Like I love plastic wands. I don't like the actual like what are these called? The actual natural fiber whatever natural ones. <laughs> I don't know because I feel like they tend to make my lashes too clumpy and I don't know what I don't know what it is about it. Like every single mascara, like they all have plastic wands, so I just go with plastic wands in general. Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna buy this palette, but I just want to give some love to my girl Raw Beauty Christy. She doesn't know me, but I love her. She came out with a uh, makeup eyeshadow palette you, you know i'm talking this way late but i'm pretty sure a lot of the people already bought it because considering they literally broke the internet with this release everything that christine's involved in you can't expect anything less than perfect and this release you can tell how much she put her soul into this and the whole packaging and the colors that she chose to be in this palette or two palettes is just we stand you know the comments are nothing less <laughs> than love for Christy and this release and we just no one can hate on Christy she's just a pure soul okay if you hate on her her whole stand will just come at you and she's recently got pregnant after like years of trying and I'm just so happy for her I personally hate kids but when other people are trying to have a kid and they don't get that, I just kind of, you know, you know, the sympathy for them is just what gets to me. This is a brand that I've been looking at a lot recently. It's Good Molecules and they have a discoloration correcting serum. I don't usually get pimples, but when I do, when the pimple goes away after like a few days, it'll leave with dark spots all over and I just get so pissed and recently I have been breaking out and it has gone away but now I'm just left with dark spots all over my face and I'm currently using the the Ordinary Arbutin 2% plus Hyaluronic Acid and I'm thinking when I'm done with one of the serums I have currently which would be the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid just the regular one I'm going to be picking up some good molecule products. I love any serum that targets like dark spots and anything involved in that category because my skin is relatively like smooth. But the only issue I have with my skin is like blackheads, but like I don't really care about that. And some dark spots. Like I have a dark spot on this cheek where it looks like a smiley face. I don't mind that one because <laughs> I just have two dots and there's like this line underneath. I don't know what it was, but it's like a swirl. So it kind of looks like a smiley face. That, and every single time I look at it, it kind of like makes me laugh. There have been a lot of mascara releases and Urban Decay is releasing a mascara called the Lash Freak. The mascara wand looks like a Venus flytrap, kind of scares me. I know I said I like plastic wands, but this wand is not one of them. When I'm talking about plastic wands, I want like one of those classic plastic wands where it's just straight or curled, depending on what the description of the mascara is. I've seen some of the reviews for this mascara and they all say it's pretty clumpy, which I don't like. <laughs> In terms of my whole makeup, I like as natural as possible and that goes for mascara. I like mascara that's not clumpy but very lengthening. That's what I see works the best for me. Okay, a high-end skincare brand that I'm, I've always been interested in is Murad. I got one of their, I think it was a vitamin C cleanser in like a mini size from Ipsy and I like that cleanser. And ever since I've been looking at the brand more closely and their ingredients are pretty good from what I see. I don't, they're, they're just too pricey. That's the only thing. 
I realized throughout the whole thing that I was talking about Mirab that I never even once mentioned what the actual product was. So it's the clarifying oil free water gel. It's kind of like a moisturizer that's supposed to prevent any breakouts and kind of clear that whole thing up. And it costs $44. I'm just a high school student. I don't want to be spending like a year worth of checks just wasting it on skincare products. I mean, I wish I could do that, but my parents won't be too happy and my bank account will be depressed the whole way through it. Becca Cosmetics is coming on the No Pigment Collection. I'm all for natural makeup, but this is taken to a whole nother extreme, okay? The No Pigment Foundation, it's, it's a primer, let's get that straight, and the No Pigment Highlighter is just a gloss. I saw that, I was like, oh cool, lip gloss. Then I read it, I was like, no, not a lip gloss. I could be getting the same thing from this, from just my basic primer and gloss. If I wanted my skin to look like I have no pigment on it, I would just put primer on. If I want like that kind of glossy finish on my skin, Use a clear lip gloss. You can dupe this with literally anything. <laughs> Patrick Star has a new makeup line out. And the funny thing is, his first release is a makeup dissolving mist and makeup removing wipes. Hate makeup wipes. The dissolving mist is kind of interesting, but the thing is, like, it's a mist, right? So it's going to be everywhere. It's just going to be in your hair on your clothes, if you're going to be wearing clothes while you're taking on makeup, it's it's just going to be messy. If he was going to go down the road of makeup removing, I wish he could have just done like micellar water or a cleansing oil or cleansing balm. Colourpop is coming out with the freckle pen. I mean, the full freckles have been a trend for like a while now. I'm not a big fan of it because I don't think it looks good on my kind of thing. I feel like it just looks like I have a disease and I'm freaking out. If you like that kind of full freckle kind of thing, I think this would be like a good product. Like for full freckles, doesn't like, doesn't the tip have to be pretty small for it to actually look kind of natural and dainty? This kind of looks, it, this, the tip for this freckle pen kind of looks like a marker. So I don't know how well that would be for like the tiny freckles, but overall, if you like full freckles, I think you could give this a shot. The Born This Way foundation from Too Faced is like a very well-known and beloved product among the makeup community. And they're coming with a matte version of it. Trend right now is the more dewy foundations and more dewy complexion. Like everyone just wants that model skin where it looks like they're not even wearing anything so this kind of is going backwards in a sense and that's what the consensus are in the comments also but i mean if you have really oily skin i feel like matte foundations will always be the right choice for you but this product is not for me because i do tend to like the more dewy complexion m cosmetics is one of those brands that i have been very intrigued in mainly because it's by Michelle Fawn and also um, their products that they do have like their serum blushes I find very interesting and some of their other products like their brow products and their eyeshadows also looks very pretty a lot of their products just very intriguing to me I'm just kind of disappointed in the shade selection of these lip liners that's all okay Fenty Skin, let's talk about it. So they have a cleanser, toner, and a moisturizer that have SPF in it. I don't like moisturizers that have SPF in it because I find that people don't really use enough and I just rather go in with another SPF on top of the moisturizer I already have. And for moisturizer, I don't really use a lot of it. And for SPF, you really have to go ham on the product that you use. I've heard that these were supposed to be like for everyone or every skin type. I don't believe that's right. I mean, an oily skin person wouldn't typically use moisturizing cleansers. And the people with dry skin wouldn't probably be using like very 
not really stripping, but like the cleansers that a oily person would be using. I know it's like their first release, but in the future, I hope that they do come out with a new, uh, like other cleansers for other skin types or just more products in general. Patrick Star is coming out with new products that consist of a lip mask, a dewy milk mist, and a face and body balm. I love Patrick Star overall. All of their products come in such beautiful packaging. <laughs> the lip mask, I don't really need. I have plenty of lip balms and stuff like that. I don't really care for lip mask. I mean, is there really a difference between lip mask and more, and lip balms? I mean, they are probably more hydrating, but you can probably just layer a lot of lip balms together and probably do the same thing. And the face and body balm, that's like the what's really interesting me. But at the same time, I don't tend to wear makeup on my body because I just think like, how am I supposed to remove that? And then the dewy mist, I have... Again, if it's like a more setting spray, don't really care for high end in that kind of sense. I usually just go for a drugstore. I mean, drugstore products are really killing it right now. So, like, I don't really look at high end products that much anymore because I can probably find a dupe that works just as well in the drugstore. Like, e.l.f. right now, their products are killing it. They're killing it. Everything they're releasing, everyone's like raving about it. Morphe is some coming out with a whole nother brand or like a Morphe 2 that is basically their ambassadors are the Demilio twins from TikTok who are very popular for dancing on YouTube. I mean not YouTube, TikTok. They, this brand is basically for like the Gen Z population where everyone's like, oh, no makeup, makeup, which is me totally. But I don't, I mean, the foundation or like the skin tint, whatever they want to call it, is I, pro I will probably pick that up <laughs> in the future. The eyeshadow, I will probably pass on it. The blush is in a pot, which I don't really like. When you're running, basically running out that thing, how are you supposed to get it? <laughs> that's what I've been basically. When I saw this, like, oh, that's so good. I love this. And then when I really dealt into like what I would buy, it's like not much actually. I don't care for lip gloss. Right now I have lip gloss, but like when that runs out, I'll probably never buy lip gloss again. Like right now, a lot of brands have that really sheer, shiny lipsticks right now. And that's basically a gloss and a lipstick in one. So I don't really need a lip gloss in that kind of consensus. Cover FX. <laughs> I've seen a lot of commercials or ads for this in like between YouTube videos. And I, the ad was mainly about their brush and how the brush has like three holes in it. It's supposed to have like a primer a tint and moisturizer and then something else so you can mix it together and put it on and that would be like a more skin-like finish but like here's the thing they're also releasing tint and moisturizer and there are only four shades like i'm sorry um i don't even see myself wearing some one of these shades i'm in between the first two shades that they have i I know it's like a tint of moisturizer so it doesn't have that much coverage but like when you think about how other products have less amount of coverage let's think about the glossy skin tint they don't have the greatest like shade range but it's basically water with a few drops of foundation and they still have more shades than four another thing is from ColourPop I know I was just raving about ColourPop earlier but like the, this eyeshadow palette is their while nothing collection, I mean, everything else looks it looks pretty. I mean, I would totally buy like the cream shadows. These cream shadows look amazing. The highlights look decent. The eyeshadow palettes by itself is just so lackluster. This collection is supposed to be kind of like a deserty collection, but the eyeshadow shades. They are all so pale. Like, did they have 
deep skin people in mind i basically the only shade i can see myself actually pulling off is the deepest shade that they have the other shades will probably just match my skin tone or just blend in completely and that's coming from me <laughs> it's just disappointing i mean yeah they're like ColourPop is doing a lot of things right like with their shade ranges for their foundations and concealers but when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes they're all so pale when it comes to um products matching people's skin tones that doesn't just mean foundations and concealers that mean every single makeup products like powders i mean powder is pretty easy just make it translucent but like um for those tinted kind of powders powders bronzers blushes um highlights eyeshadows even brow pencils they we need why i why we need variety why variety 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 we need variety still with everything and brands are not pulling that off still huda is coming out with a new highlighter that costs 55 dollars but based on the picture, it looks pretty big. It's supposed to be, I think it's like, yeah, it says all over. So I'm thinking like a body highlight and also face. I think they only have one shade. Okay, based on the swatches, I heard again Angelica all say this. For the pale skin tones, this highlight looks way too dark. For the medium, it's like just perfect, so I probably would be able to pull this off if I really wanted to, but I won't. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy this. But like for the deep skin tones, it looks gray. At least come out with three shades of highlights. That's the bare minimum for a highlight, I think. One is for pale skin tones, one medium, one for dark. What's so hard about that is just three shades. Glow Recipe is coming out with a Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm. It looks so interesting. It, oh my, I love cleansing balms. It's like the, my favorite part of the my skincare routine is strangely like the cleansing part. I feel like it's just the fact that I'm just rubbing my skin. Because <laughs> like right now we're not allowed to touch our skin whatsoever. Because you know, Corona. But like when you're cleansed. When you're cleansing and just like rubbing your skin, it just feels so nice. It's kind of like you're giving yourself a own little massage. And cleansing balms, again, go with, for taking over makeup, go with cleansing balm, micellar water, or cleansing oil. They're the safest bet to not really rub your skin with too much because even though you are trying to take off your makeup, you still have to be gentle with it. It costs, how much does it cost? $32. Not a, it's a pretty decent price for kind of... A Sephora brand. <laughs> I'm like getting tired. I've been talking. This video has been running for almost an hour now and my voice is getting sore. So fun. You think you have it rough? I've been editing for a solid three hours now. Maybe you should shut up once in a while and just stop talking. Don't talk so much. You're boring people. You're boring me. Okay, so Deck of Scarlet, I'm not really familiar with the brand, but they're coming out with a Mistake Proof a Blush and Bronzer. It's basic, it's in an aerosol can or like a mist. Again, I can, I see it just going everywhere. The shades for this look pretty, but I wish that it would just be like a regular packaging instead of a mist. If you spray on the thing, it would just be like... It will just cover everything. It's just going to be so messy. I, unless you're not really supposed to be using it as like a full-on mist. And you're supposed to actually use it to spray on a brush that's kind of just getting rid of the misty property to it. So that's kind of just gimmicky. It's not kind of gimmicky, it is gimmicky. <laughs> and Cosmetics is coming out with four new serum blush shades. Um... The shades are not really for me. There's like a really, like a red shade, not really for me. Lilac, not really for me. The two other shades are kind of lighter than why I prefer in blushes. The serum blushes, as I said before, from M Cosmetics is one of those products I really like about M Cosmetics. But the amount of product that you get in this one is a lot. I mean, that's a good thing for most people. But for me, like I prefer to use up products. 
and that much product I can't really use up. Finish your sentences. God. Okay, Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a new setting powder. Well, not new, but it's their classic airbrush flawless setting powder. And just a deeper, sh they came out with like a deeper shade and the shade name is um, Deep. It's not really that deep. I mean, that could be like a bronzer for me. I wish they would have released another shade that's a lot deeper than this. Wayne Gloss, Wayne Gloss, <laughs> Wayne Gloss is coming out with an eyeshadow palette and also eye pencils. People are saying in the comments that this is a very boring palette. I mean, I'd agree. There have been a lot of neutral palettes in the past, but at the same time, eyeshadow palettes in general has been very overdone lately. You we basically seen every single combination possible at this point. I'm not gonna purchase it only because there are only two mattes, and I prefer more of a matte look than shimmer. And the eye pencils, however, are pretty dope looking. I don't really know the prices for this, but I probably won't purchase any of it. I feel like people are being too harsh on the release of this. Maybe it's my personal bias because I love Wayne Goss, but when you think about it, like the everyday people, like the ordinary people don't really tend to wear colorful eyeshadows every single day so there's still gonna be an audience for this palette no matter what some people may think that's boring but i think it's just a perfect everyday palette for some people oh and that's all folks i'm going to be moving to the center again <sighs> okay so now that we're done with the whole video it's time for the shout out of the day Okay, so today's shout out of the day is going to be going to... Okay, so this person's on Instagram, so I'll be popping her profile up over here. So her username on Instagram is called Brownstone United. She's just, she looks so gorgeous. She, oh my god, if just, let's just admire how pretty she looks for a second. I mean... Come on now. She is gorgeous. Her face is perfection. She looks like a doll. Like, come on. Her eyeshadow looks are very elegant. It's like a very basic eyeshadow look. It's kind of like that soft glam. But she does wear colors, but she makes them look elegant. It's kind of like an everyday colored eyeshadow. It's not like that really loud in your face eye like colored eyeshadow. But I kind of like that, you know? Not everyone likes that kind of poppy, bright, bold eyes. Her face. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm gonna leave off at. Okay, thank you for watching today's video. Remember to like and subscribe and follow all of my social media, which is in the description box down below. And I will see you in the next upload, whenever that will be. I love you all. Remember to wear protection and see you on the next one. Love you.